didn't understand what was, was going to take place. So they said, well, maybe it has to do with that he's going to go away and then come back again. And while he's gone, that uh, the temple will be destroyed and, uh, and it will be while he's in a far country. So they asked the question, based on their, their misunderstanding of what Jesus was going to do, they said, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of the age? And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the, the Christ, and they will lead many astray. So, so Jesus begins answering their questions. But when, when people have read this, this chapter, the question comes up all the time is, how many questions do the disciples ask? How many questions is Jesus answering? Is he answering two questions or three? Is, is he answering the question, um, what will be the sign of my coming? And, and um, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of the close of the age? So is, is he asking three questions or is he asking when will these things be and what will this be the sign of my coming at the end of the age if there are only two questions? Well, if you compare Luke 13, uh, I mean uh, Mark 13 and uh, Luke 21, the, these are parallel accounts of the Olivet Discourse. It's called the Olivet Discourse because it was given on the Mount of Olives. And in, in Luke chapter, in Mark chapter 13, Jesus said, uh, or the disciples asked, when will these things be? That's one question. And what will be the sign of that when all these things are about to be accomplished? So you can see in Mark that there are two questions. And then in Luke chapter 21, another parallel account. They said, teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? So in the, in the parallel account, you see that the, the, uh, what will be the sign of my coming at the end of the age is, uh, when will be the, uh, is equivalent to uh, when all these things are about to be accomplished. So, these questions reduced to two. When is, when is the temple going to be destroyed? And what will be the, the sign of thy coming at the end of the age? Well, Jesus begins to answer those questions. But the real problem that has come up in trying to understand chapter 24 uh, is verse 34. He says in verse 34, Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not take place. And that verse seems to indicate that he's talking that the things in the preceding verses take place in the lifetime of the people to whom he is speaking. This generation. So the assumption is made there that this generation refers to the people of uh, that age. But if you look in verse 32, the context is talking about a parable. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. So Jesus has told a parable indicating the time of his return. And then he uses a parable of a fig tree. Well, a parable is a story with a message. So what is the message of the fig tree? Well, if you look at Joel chapter 1 and verse 8, you'll find that in Joel, the fig tree is identified as Israel. And Israel, the fig tree, is if you apply this parable, had become dormant. There was a season of dormancy when the, the tree was bare. And it was just a bare tree standing, waiting for spring, waiting for summer. 